And we're following new developments tonight, the groping accusations against Attorney General Curtis Hill. One of the women accusing him of inappropriate touching has now come forward. And just hours later, Hill called those allegations, quote, vicious and false. News 8 State House Bureau Chief David Williams just spent the day chasing down the latest information. He's live at the State House now with more. David. I got my hands on that letter right here. In it, that state lawmaker gives deeply personal details inside what she says happened that night in March. Quote, I am also a victim of sexual battery perpetrated by Indiana Attorney General Curtis Hill. Democrat State Rep Mara Candelera Reardon wrote in a letter to the Northwest Indiana Times, IDing herself as one of his accusers. Quote, Curtis Hill leaned toward me as if he could not hear me and placed his hand on my back and slid his hand down to my buttocks and grabbed it. She says it happened early March 15th at an Indy lounge. Later that evening, while with a group, she said, quote, Hill came up behind me and put his hand on my back again and said that skin that back I recoiled away before he could touch my buttocks again within the last 24 hours Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb Congresswoman Suzanne Brooks and State House leaders from both parties demanded he'll resign fellow Republican leader State Rep Brian Bosma and Senate President David Long said Hill is not our employee if he was he would already have been fired Today, Hill balked at the allegations, saying, I am not resigning. The allegations against me are vicious and false. At no time did I ever grab or touch anyone inappropriately, adding, quote, there's a fundamental lack of fairness and due process. I really believe that there, there has to be due process. Reverend Charles Harrison runs the 10-point coalition to fight urban gun violence. He supports Hill as a person. I asked Reverend Harrison what he thinks should happen as these allegations continue to swirl around Curtis Hill. If the women were sexually harassed uh, by Attorney General Curtis Hill, then we need to get that right. But we need to see all of the facts. And certainly if that was the case, then I stand with them and all to condemn that. But if that's not the case, um, then I stand with uh, Attorney General Curtis Hill when he says I'm not going to step down because I didn't do this. This morning, the Indiana Inspector General's office says it will move forward with investigating the allegations against Curtis Hill. You can read the full statements, also that report, as well as see the full timeline of the accusations right now. Just go to wishtv.com and click on the story. I'm David Williams, live at the State House tonight, Wish TV News 8. David, thank you. Democrat State Rep Mara Candelaria Reardon's willingness to come forward leaves no doubt the Me Too movement isn't going anywhere anytime soon. In fact, some credit the movement for accusations against Hill being taken seriously. News 8's Elizabeth Choi joins us now with more on that. Elizabeth. Brenna, we spoke to Laura Wilson, who's an assistant professor of political science at the University of Indianapolis. She feels there's a silver lining to these allegations against Hill. That silver lining being prior to the Me Too movement, which began around October of last year, perhaps these allegations would not have been investigated or even worse, just swept under the rug. She called this a post Me Too society where allegations are being taken seriously. It absolutely sends a clear message to them because it shows people will be held accountable for their actions. Now, this isn't going through legal channels as of yet. This has simply been going through the other process. Uh, but nonetheless, people are being taken seriously for these kind of allegations. And it's not something that you know, probably a year ago, six months ago maybe even, would have just been acknowledged and then moved on. The Me Too movement began last fall as a platform for women to speak out against sexual harassment and assault. Coming up, we're going to hear from a victim and how the Me Too movement gave her a voice. That's at 6 o'clock. But for now, in the studio, Elizabeth Choi, Wish TV News 8.